So, like you see right there, we're thinking maybe the heads have been milled somewhat. Other than that, they look, that front head looks fine. So we'll uh, remove this rear. Well, I'm just struggling with words. Front head look like, front head. The front head looked like it had been milled a little bit, looks fine. So we're gonna pull this rear head off and see what it is right now. Or do you do wanna pull this cylinder also? Yeah, let's pull the cylinder. Let's pull the cylinder. What I gotta just pull it? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna pull the cylinder. Let's get my hands on my jugs. Feels good. They look like, they feel like triple Ds. All right, just pull it. Yeah. Kidding me. No way. Okay. Okay, so go ahead and Go, keep going, and I'm going to put regs in there so we don't drop it. Okay, are you ready? Yep. How do I do? Yeah. Keep going? Yeah, it's all you. Go. Okay. You want to see my jugs? Just jugging you around, man. How big are your jugs? What we, we, just, do, what we do this is we just put rubber hose around it so your piston doesn't get smashed or you do something. How do you know if the rings are good? Well, if we, again, how far and how deep do you want to go with it is what do you want to replace? Now, me personally, with my own personal bike and most customer bikes, if we take that cylinder off, you get new ring. So what's, is that pulling the piston or put rings on? It's a, oh, we can, we can leave them right there. That's not that big of a deal. But again, you, you've got to, we're going to ball hone that out. Ball yeah. Oh yeah, I know yeah. that thing. Yep, cross. Yep, yeah. and they're gonna put a nice cross hatch on it, so your new rings will have a new surface to play around. Uh, so how do we know how big? Does that piston tell us how big this is? Like, is this been honed out? Or we don't know yet, because that you just. But this that is, piston. This, this. Let me just tell you this. This is not a stock uh, piston. Okay. How do you know that? I've taken off a bunch of them. Just, just from personal knowledge, that is, hey, that's not a stock Harley Davidson pistol. But it still won't outrun your view. It probably still won't. As, see, there's no marking. Uh, how do you know this is the front head? I mean, front jug. How do you know that? If I take both of these off, Put them behind my back, and I can hand them to you. How do you know there was a front? Oh, you just there? throw one on there, right? And that's not what we're gonna do. But that's what we're gonna do. Larry's getting a little. Uh, his hair's getting a little curly, and he don't have any. Well, I mean, any hair that I know of, anyway. Well, it doesn't look like they have like a big scar down or anything. No, it does. It, well, see, it will have that little scar yeah. right there. And it will have another one on the other side because um, we just pulled it out, and that's going to happen. That is no that is just part of that. Really taking, much. Yeah, that much. But again, that's not. But you see the reflection of your face. Yeah. You're not supposed to have that because that's what that cross hatch is for. Okay. Okay. So you're gonna set it down on a nice surface. On a four? No. Oh, no. You make me nervous. Don't get another lift. We are after this is done. We are going to clean this off. So Larry's getting, he's getting antsy. Uh, he's saying I'm causing a mess here. I thought it looked great. What do you guys think? If you guys are, are watching this, how how do you uh, how would you rate this? I've got everything in red rags. And uh, I felt good about it. And all of a sudden, Larry's like, man, this is giving me the jitters. Okay, so I gotta take this rear off now. Yes, sir. Okay, guys, rear washer, no, the rear head. Yeah, come off. Let's see how we do with it. Sean, come take a peek at this head. Oh, fuck, <laughs> man. 
See what I'm saying? If any, tell, anything, tell. anything you take apart here and he goes yelling at somebody to come here and look, it's exciting. Tell. But so this is what I've been hearing. Is that okay? That is amazing. Is that from factory? All right. So I'm gonna show you guys what we just seen. Let me make sure I get this in the camera good. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna because this is gonna cost, so I might as well capitalize off as much as I can. So we took this off and I said, hey Larry, what is this right here? So you see this right here? Yeah. See those pings? Those are beautiful. Those the only reason that I say they're beautiful because it, it's now expensive. Can you bring that up just a touch? Why is everybody <laughs> Dude, at this point there's nothing else to do but laugh. You can't, you can't nothing... do anything else because Okay, so I was right when I kept hearing that chat. Right, but see, the thing is, though, or is that, has that, that could been have been previously? an old injury that you needed the head. And again, is it one of those things that, will it run? Yes, it will run with that injury. Do we want it to run with that injury? No. But again, how is life working? So go ahead and let's put that head over here. Well, Stephanie, I can't wait to call you this evening. I'm coming home this evening. I'm gonna need little hugs and maybe a beer. No, I can't afford the beer. I'll just uh, take a hug. Okay, let's go look at these heads. So you guys can get a close up of a nice, clean, new, reconditioned head. Oh, look at that. And then, and then the front head that we took off. And then we looked at the deck heights from the right. height. We call deck heights from here to here versus the distance from here to here. Which we think those have been milled. These have been bit. milled. But again, we'll, we'll check it out again when we look for mill marks, but see, look at right here. Look at the damage, did we just see this yeah, right see, here? Yeah, see, we didn't even look at that, we'll go. Right, you've got pits here, and then you've got pits here. So all of this has happened from the last time it's all been worked on. This is all just old injuries. Once again, they look like, you know, this one's been milled the same. Um, yep, how much gas is in Okay, yeah, you're gonna have to do that, and I don't know Okay, cool, thank you. Yeah, Go ahead, and you okay. can pull the jug. All right. Oh, really? Go ahead. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I'm going to do this nicely and done. Okay. Nice and easy. Be a good girl. There you go. Fuck it. You got to turn it sideways, manipulate Yeah. Rotate it. The whole thing. Yep, there you go. I don't know about your manipulation skills. I know mine aren't that good, apparently. Yeah. Well, that's right. Okay, I did it. I see a has, hatch. Scro uh, cross hatch? Yeah, I did. Yeah. And I still don't see any red gasket anywhere. I don't see any. So that these are all injuries from previous, previous whatever, uh, whatever, you know. So I took that off of there just like that. I'm gonna take it right over here and set it down. Yep. And then I'm gonna put an R on it. Yes, sir. For a rough motherfucker. Oh, uh, and we could have lost a little bit of compression because it looks like your your rings were lined up. You see how the your gap is right here and your gap is right here? Yeah. Yeah, the rings were lined up, so we're losing we're losing compression. That's probably part of some of the noise and some of the stuff, but you still have even wear on your Carbon is one of those things you want to look at, make sure. But you remember our plugs? This is the front plug versus that. Ooh, this is a good one. Let's look at that. Versus So this Larry one. and I looked at the plugs when we pulled them, and this is exactly what he's talking about. So Larry, explain what we're seeing here in this so front one. So what you're seeing is, see how nice and clean that is yes. and how pretty that is and see how not wavy or bumpy it's kind of a nice coating on it but you have it gone here so our plug was probably pointed 
in this direction. So your flame starts here at your spark and ignites here. Okay, mm -hmm. and same thing with this one. So they were actually indexed, almost indexed perfectly. But this one here has a little bit more carbon on it. And, but this is where we're hearing the noise and this is the worst push rod that was bent. So it leads to tell me that this is, look at, read your plugs. Your, your plugs will tell you everything. So as we're looking right now, those the, my pistons look fine. Now. Yeah, your pistons are fine. The rings, this one here, the rings. If you if you want to get to the rings here, and show the front of it, I mean, their rings are going to rotate. They're going to float back and forth, back and forth like this in this cylinder. But see, these are almost lined up, and our other ones aren't. Our other ones are right where they're supposed to be, you know, away from each other. The gap is so far front away from each other that it's. Okay. that it's not a bad thing. And if they line up, they cause you to lose a little of the compression? The compression starts to smoke. It gets, it gets ugly and expensive. Yeah. You'd have to take it down to this point again and, and do what we're doing to this one. Not as far as taking the oil pump off or anything like that. It's just as far as taking off and going all the way down to the cylinders. Okay, so now we kind of, we know what we're dealing with, right? Sort of, yeah. We, now we know we still have to clean off the top of the pistons to find out what size those are and see if they can, we can find a make on them, see who made them and see if we can get new rings. And then we can just ball hone those out and put new rings on it, put it back together. But our biggest question, Larry, is we need to discuss the heads. Right, if you wanna come back over to the heads again, are we going to want to put a new head on it? or live with what we have. So we'll have to check the price of a new head. Well, I'm Evos sorry. are hard, you can't, we'll have to find, yeah, we're gonna have to research it because sometimes Harley doesn't offer these Evo parts and you have to go aftermarket. Oh. And do you want aftermarket on it? You can, I mean, it's not gonna, it's not a bad thing, but me, I'm an OEM guy when it comes to that, so this is the stock head. So, would you be afraid to run those heads the way they are now? Well, the, if it was my bike, I wouldn't. And why is that? Because that's what it should look like versus what it looks like. Would that hurt my bike? It, see, the thing is, and the answer is yes and no. Because there's no sharp points, everything is radiused. It's not going to hurt anything but it will hurt something because it's not as controlled burn as this. This is, this is a, a radius here and it's flat. This is flat, this isn't. So you can get carbon buildup in here, you can get a sharp point, you can get it to be a lot of different things. I mean, it's not, any sharp burr that you have, you have a chance for damage. You just, because it's sharp, it's a hot point. So then this hot point breaks mm -hmm. off and then it goes into your valve and then yep. it goes into, it just, Makes it can sense. get ugly. How about the valves? How do they look? Do you have well, to so far, I mean, we, we can take them apart and look at them, but if we take them apart, then we got to go deeper. Again, how deep do you want to go? Right, okay. There you go, Larry. <laughs> yeah, you take that. Okay, got me an R to backwards, that right there, and I'm gonna go right about here. I'd say it's about where I put the F and do a good R stamp. There we are, rear. Now we know what's front and what's rear. Oh, thanks, Larry. Okay. So Larry and I were just talking about this, you know, off camera here, and I'm gonna kick this on. I asked Larry, I said, so, man, that smells good. <laughs> so uh, this was somebody's baby, like Larry was saying, they had put some money into it. Because what Larry and I were just talking about with Maxwell House here, Back in the day, somebody had put a lot of money in this. Like he was saying, it, this bike was somebody's baby. They put some time and money and effort into this bike. 
Now here I've got it and it's been through the, the ringer a little bit, but it definitely had some good parts put in it. And um, as we build this, and I, I keep telling myself, I want when we're done with this, I want to make it better than what it was. And I mean, not making any noise and running proper, but I also want to make it better since we're in there. And that's where Larry and I were talking about, do I really need to do that? Like, like we always talk about, people talk about cams, you know, and head work and all this stuff. Do I really need all that stuff to do what I do with the Maxwell house? It's one thing we all have to kind of decide, you know, and like these heads over here, am I going to spend the money and go look in and, and get a new set of heads? Like Larry was saying, then I'll have to do valves and go into all that stuff. Or do we check out what we got here on these that are kind of deemed up and put them back on? They have ran for, I think, over five years now with these heads. You know, some decisions that we have to make. Now, is that cutting corners? Yeah, I think it is. Because it isn't proper. It isn't the factory way of doing stuff or a new aftermarket way. This is a beat up part that we're using and going on with. And in a way, that is the kind of chopper way. You know, I feel that. But I want it to be good because whether people don't know this or not, this is actually Kindred. That's my son. This is his bike. And this is what it, he's going to have from whatever I make out of the honorary one. Hopefully we'll make more stuff. We have more to uh, acquire as time goes on. But as of right now, this is all you got, bud. So I kind of think about that as well. It's kind of like my legacy that I'm gonna leave to him. So, and you're gonna be able to watch this, son. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> give me kind of tear dot. But you will be able to watch if you watch this. You'll be able to go back and see what Larry and dad did here at Picture of Harley Davidson because right now you're becoming a fireman. You're doing all the ins and out right now. I'm very proud of you. And I want to leave you something, if this is all it is, worth having. So there's a lot more going on in my head than I really talk about too with this bike. So a lot of decisions to be made. And the biggest one I think I'm going to have is what to do with these heads. Now, if I had the money, I'd just get some new heads. We'd do some machine work and we'd make this thing just a, a rape tape, you know what I mean? But I don't have all the money that I need to do that, honestly. We have things to do this year and places to go, and I'm on a budget. But this motorcycle doesn't give a shit about budgets. That's what Larry says all the time. They just want to go. So how fast do we want it to go, and how long do we want to make it last? And that has a lot to do with me, of course, how I take care of the bike. I've learned a lot already. You guys watch me talk about this bike in the very beginning of this episode talking about Maxwell House and what we're doing here at Pig Trail and what this bike means to me and I did not take care of it the way I could and should I've learned that now so it goes down to the witch's hat as crazy as it seems guys it starts all there taking care of your bike loving your bike or be the guy that's like fuck it I really don't give a shit about that bike I'm gonna sell it throw it in the ditch I'm done with it I don't care fuck that guy and that's usually how I am, honestly. But now, after seeing this, and I'm getting to a different age, I think uh, my mindset's changing a little bit. And there you go, you got Maxwell House becoming to be its own entity. It's a, it's its own personality. And I, I don't say I love it, but I'm kind of getting fond of it. And I've never been this way with anything, any mechanical stuff. It's just a machine, I'll get rid of it. You've heard me say that, Larry, it's just a machine. But Maxwell House is starting to become something else to me. So really, the what I've learned this Saturday working on Maxwell House here is I should have took care of this bike more. Uh, it probably wouldn't have got to this point. Um, but I do know this. If you're having fun and you're enjoying your bike, shit does happen. And you are going to mess up stuff. And I don't want you as a viewer or a motorcyclist or becoming a motorcyclist to be afraid of getting a motorcycle, although I shit you all the time going, oh my God, if you're thinking about a motorcycle, really think about that. It is truly freedom, but freedom does come with a cost. So, and the biggest thing is maintenance, doing the things that we all can do. And I think in these videos, you're gonna be able to see some stuff that I could have done. Hopefully you'll do different in as far as maintenance. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and what Larry and I have found out today on this video this Saturday here at uh, Picture of Harley Davidson. 
Like I said, I appreciate Picture Harley Davidson and Larry for letting me come in here and make a mess out of the shop and talk and ask all these dumb questions. And if you're watching this video, guys, a little bit of soapbox here. I'm not a mechanic. I don't do this for a living. I never have. I'm learning as I go. If you're not gentle on me, if you got some smart ass comments, I get it. Go ahead and drop them below and I'll read them. Now, if I get back to you with a smart ass comment, call me, whatever you want to say, I'm probably not going to respond to you. Um, this is just me learning and being a social individual, being able to put myself out there, put myself in this position to learn, and hopefully you learn off on mistakes. And I'm going to put this at the end of this. If you guys haven't subscribed, please do that. That would mean a lot to me. Give me a thumbs up. And sharing is caring. If you share anything, I'd appreciate it as well. We have all the social media platforms, so you can go find us on any platform. And we, start, we try to stay current on them and all the ins and outs of what we're doing with the motorcycle and the culture. And also we have our website, www.theartery1.com where Steph has worked very hard on that website. You can go see our riding guides that we have here in the Ozarks. Um, amazing rides that we have. And you can go see our merch. Buying merch helps support us tremendously as well, representing the honoring one, because we are a little honoring on the side. Once again, guys, thanks for tuning in and chiming in. Until I see you somewhere on the road or here on the internet, y'all stay honoring. Okay, Larry.